All right, let's be honest here. We all want one thing, to make a lot of money with the least amount of time and the least amount of effort given. Well, did you know that you could have quite a chunk of cash just lying around in your old box of Pokemon cards? Besides some well-known Holy Grail cards, today we're going to cover some other variants of classic cards that can net you a nice profit if you know what to look for. Let's start with the rarest of the rare, the Holy Grail cards. These cards are considered the rarest of the rare and can go for huge sums of money. The first is the Trophy Pikachu Trainer Number 1 card. These cards are considered almost priceless and not many have ever come up for sale. They are given out to trainers who have finished highly in official sanctioned Pokemon tournaments. The rarest form of these cards comes from the 90s tournaments and are usually Japanese. The next is the famous Pokemon Illustrator cards, which were given out to winners of a Pokemon Illustration contest for the Koro Koro magazine in Japan, taking place in 1997. Winners of the contest were given this card as a prize. 39 of these cards were said to be given out, but after this many years, it's thought that there are only around 6 confirmed to still exist. The rarity of these cards lead to huge price points and have been sold for over $50,000. Most listings that do appear reach easily over $75,000, so better start saving now. A lesser known Holy Grail card is the base set pre-release Raichu. These cards came into existence by mistake when Wizards of the Coast were printing the pre-release Clefable for the Jungle expansion. Several base set Raichu were added to the printing sheet and stamped with the pre-release symbol by accident. Only 8 to 10 of these cards are said to exist, and prices can expect to reach the 10,000 mark with ease. In 1999, a Pokemon card tournament was held in Honolulu, Hawaii, in which about 50 participants attended. A commemorative card was given out to the first 12 people to arrive. The card was a trainer card called Tropical Mega Battle. The card was only in Japanese and had fetched $10,000 in mint condition. I guess people really want to pay for that lazy Psyduck. If you were a Pokemon fan back in the days of the Nintendo 64, you most likely played Pokemon Snap. There were two photo contests held in 1999, in which fans could submit their best photos taken in-game. The five best photos from each contest were used to make a promotional Pokemon card with. The exact number of these cards are unknown, but each of the winners was said to receive 20 copies of their card. The cards can now fetch up to $8,000 apiece when sold on the market. Definitely a cool collector's piece for any of those with loose change in their pockets. Another prize given out to Pokemon card tournament players in Japan was the Master Key prize card. 34 of these cards were known to exist at some point, and remaining copies have been known to sell in the $10,000 range. The last Pokemon card tournament card on my list is the Japanese Parent and Child TCG event Kangaskhan card. This card was given out as a prize in a tournament held for children and their parents. During this tournament, battles would be taking place between child and parent duos. The card was given out as a prize for those teams that finished high in the tournament. The card is highly sought after and highly regarded as some of the best early Pokemon art out there. This card has been known to go for $10,000 in the past. Now those are the cards that you had to be in the right place at the right time for, and it's unlikely that you have any just lying around. But what about the average collector who opened booster packs and traded cards with their friends in the 90s and 2000s? Well, you'll be happy to know that the next cards on the list are all obtainable in booster packs and other similar means, but can still net you good money due to their rarity. Some are easy to spot when you have one, and some have slight variations that you may have never noticed. So get out those old binders and boxes and follow along. Shadowless Now the first rare card variant that we have to cover are Shadowless cards. The first ever set of Pokemon cards was called the Base Set. It had a first edition print that contained a small indicating symbol on the card. First edition prints are among the most sought after cards of any set because of their limited quantity. After the initial print run of the first editions, the company will release an unlimited run of the same cards but without the first edition symbol. These are the cards most people get in stores. The unique thing about the base set, the company was still experimenting with the layout and aesthetics of the card after the first edition run, which becomes apparent when the cards from both first edition and limited are compared. The most obvious changes is the weighting of the text for HP values and attacks. They are much bolder in the unlimited set. Another was the inclusion of a drop shadow under the character illustration window, supposedly added to give the card more depth. This change led to a relatively small amount of cards to be printed in the old format, but without the first edition symbol. This is what originally gave the cards the nickname Shadowless. The cards are also devoid of a lot of the shading and color that was added in the Unlimited run. First edition cards are technically Shadowless, and they are the most expensive of the three, 
but the term shadowless most refers to the small print before the changes took place. These cards are also sought after because of the closeness and appearance to the original first edition prints. Trainer and energy cards from base set don't have the image box lacking the shadow, so they can't be shadowless. However, there are other differences from this print run. The major difference is the copyright info. The shadowless print run says 1995, 96, 98, 99, Nintendo, while the unlimited runs leave off the 99. Shadowless cards are generally more valuable than their base set counterparts. The Shadowless Charizard has went for over $12,000, Shadowless Blastoise for $8,000, Venusaur $6,000, Mewtwo and Chansey from this set also go for over $1,000. Shadowless cards are worth looking for since they can drastically up the value of your cards. Who knows, you may have thought you just had a normal base set Charizard this whole time. Another rare variant card is the misprint Krabby card that has went for over $5,000. This card is only rare because of the small error in the fossil emblem under the right corner of the artwork. Make sure you scan any of your fossil Krabby cards very carefully. Maybe you have the lucky version. Shining Cards The next super rare cards that were found in sets were the various runs of Shining Cards that were first introduced in the Neo Revelation expansion, but didn't really take off until the next expansion, Neo Destiny. The Shining cards have a special shiny color variant of the Pokemon, and have a 3 star rarity marker instead of the traditional single star. They are also rare in that the Pokemon themselves are hollow foil instead of the artwork background. These cards were found in booster packs and were ultra rare at the time, and even more so now. Shining cards from the Neo sets all go for over $40 a piece, and several including the Shining Charizard go for over $100. The next Shining cards came in the form of Star Pokemon in the EX Expansion set. These cards were found in about one of every two booster boxes, driving their rarity and prices way up. The Star Charizard easily goes for over 500, and most of the other cards are in the hundreds as well. The last type of card in this category are the Crystal cards from the Aquapolis series. These don't use the shiny color variant of the Pokemon, but rather change the typing and color of the info portion of the card. A full set of these cards can net you anywhere up to $10,000. While there are other Shining cards in other sets, none command the prices of the ones mentioned before, so I'm not going to cover them in this video. So now you should have a pretty good idea of what cards to look for in order to score a big profit. The next question is, where to look? A lot of people don't really know what they have when they have one of these cards in their collections. Scour garage sales and online listings from personal sellers, and you can occasionally find a gem for cheap. Believe it or not, many stores throw these kinds of cards in with other common cards without knowing any better. Stores that have single cards for sale can be a gold mine if you know what to look for. A few years ago, I was looking through a box of single cards at a local store and found a base set Charizard for $2.99. Finds like these can really pay off for those of you that are patient. So I hope this video gave you some insight and was an interesting look into the Pokemon trading card game's history. If I missed any expensive cards that you know of, make sure you let me know in the comments below. If you liked the video, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe on your way out. We'll see you next time.